guys, it's Kate from The Incredible Canine. Today I'm going to teach you a couple different exercises that you can use with your dog to teach your dog how to walk politely on a leash. The first thing that I'm going to talk about is called long line work. A long line is a 15 foot leash. Your standard leash is six feet long and we want a longer one a 15 foot long leash, it's called a long line. I'm going to talk about a week long program that you can do with your dog. I'll go through what you'll wanna do throughout the different days of the week. And on day one, you wanna take your dog out and walk a pattern. So I prefer to walk either a triangular pattern or a rectangular pattern as opposed to just walking back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. But if you don't have a yard big enough to do this, then go to an elementary school or go to a park. But it's best to use just a big yard, a big grassy area or even a blacktop area is totally fine. And you want a big enough space that you're going to walk a pattern. I like walking a pattern instead of walking just back and forth because you're covering more ground and it simulates migration. We're gonna walk with our dog, giving them 15 feet of slack in the leash and we're teaching them how to find the slack. How to yield to leash pressure and exist within a certain distance from us. Day one and two are going to be really similar. So if you're out with your dog and you start at point A, which is just an imaginary point A, you're going to start walking toward point B. At the point that your dog gets out ahead of you and disengaged, like you're walking together and they start moving out ahead of you, like they have no clue you're still back there, you're going to make a directional change, which just means if you're walking toward point B, then turn and start to walk toward point C. Your dog has no clue that you just changed direction. So um, they're gonna end up like correcting themselves. You're not going to jerk the leash at all. When you change direction, actually just plant the leash at your side and turn direction. When you change directions, that loose leash will become tight. At the point that, that that leash becomes tight because you're walking that way and they have no clue that you went that way, it's like, oh, and they turn and they're coming with you. At the point that the leash goes slack again, so you've just turned and started to walk toward point C, at the point that the dog's like, oh, whoop, yep, coming that way, you can turn around and allow them to continue then back toward point B. They disengage from you again, they're moving out ahead, turn again, walk towards C. Maybe this time you just wanna keep walking towards C. As they catch up to you and they start passing you, getting out in front, disengaging from you, do a directional change again and start walking toward point A. It might correct them again and the dog's walking, they have no clue that you went that way and then it's like whoop, and then off they go. So you're giving them 15 feet to realize like, hey buddy, we change direction and you're teaching them how to find the slack leash, which is to pay attention to where you're going. Imagine that. As long as your dog continues to charge out ahead of you, keep making those directional changes. You might be out in the yard for 10 minutes or you might be out in the yard for 60 minutes, but you're teaching the dog how to find a loose leash. At the point that your dog is calm and respectful, then end the session. And when I end the session, I keep them on a leash. I don't just let them off the leash. They can drag the leash around the yard or I can sit down in the yard and just bond with your dog, pet your dog, interact with your dog to end the session. We should not be talking to our dog throughout any of this. There's no need to tell the dog what to do. We're teaching the dog that without command, it's going to be understood that they need to pay attention to us. On day three and day four, we're going to adjust what we do by just a little bit. We're still going to walk in this triangular pattern. At the point that they're just five feet ahead of us, 
make a directional change. Don't drag the dog back to a different point. At the, at the moment that the leash becomes slack and they come back within that five foot range, you can turn back toward point B. So say out here ahead of point B is a bunch of distraction. We're starting at A, we're walking toward point B, toward all this distraction. The dog disengages, moves ahead of us by about five feet, we turn and walk towards C. At the point that they're slack in the leash and they've caught up with us within that five foot range, we can turn back again and walk toward B. We're walking toward B, walking toward B, they disengage, they move ahead of us toward all this distraction, we turn around again. You can even toward turn toward point A. And we're just making all of these directional changes at the point that the dog gets ahead of us by about five feet. So now we're giving our dogs 10 feet of space to realize that we've changed direction. Still don't talk to the dog, but at this point on days three and day four, the dog should not be charging out at the end of the long line. They should start to check in with us. And that looks like when a dog, they'll literally start to look up at you. They'll pay attention to you at the point that they may get five feet ahead of you and you turn this way the leash won't even end up getting tight. They'll realize you've turned and they'll be coming with you. No need to talk to your dog. Keep your body language relaxed and let the dog figure it out. Let the dog figure out that they need to be paying attention to you. On days five and six, the dog now has to stay within two feet of your personal space. So you're still on that 15 foot long line and at the point that the dog disengages from you, they get just two feet ahead of you, make a directional change. We're just now teaching that dog like at the point that they slightly move ahead or slightly disengage from us, guess what, we're going another way. This is actually easier for the dog because if you're on a 15 foot long line and you're making a change when they get two feet away from you. They essentially have 13 feet of space to realize like you went that way and they're still going that way. So it's the same protocol, walking your triangular or your rectangular pattern with distractions out here farther away in the yard with the neighbors or the street or kids playing. Um, you don't want the distractions to be too crazy. Like your husband with your other dog, you know, out here in the yard beyond your imaginary points A, B, and C, that's actually gonna be a really tough distraction. So we just want it to be natural distractions. The next exercise that we're going to do is called Yield to Me, Follow Me. It's going to involve a lot of left-hand turns and right-hand turns. First, the dog needs to be positioned on your left-hand side. We need to help the dog understand that they need to be back behind our leg on the left-hand side. So in order to help the dog learn that, we're going to make left-hand turns into them. So if the dog's here on your left and you're turning into them, the spatial pressure essentially helps them understand they have to stay back because they're going to avoid you running into their head. And that might actually happen. When you turn to the left, you might actually bump into their head or bump into their shoulder. But if they're here on your left and you turn into them, spatial pressure will help us greatly with helping the dog understand that they're gonna be on our left and they need to be back a little bit further. They can't be out ahead of us. Then when we, we make right hand turns, we're going to incorporate the same drill, the same routine as our long line work. They need to pay attention to us when we make a turn. So if you turn to the right and they are on your left, you turn to the right, there would be the natural consequence of the leash correction if they don't follow right with you. So we're going to do a lot of left hand turns and right hand turns to help the dog understand the positioning on the left and the heel position back behind my leg and then that they need to always focus on us and always yield to us.
The last step in teaching your dog how to walk politely on the leash is to teach them what exactly is the heel position. So the heel position is on our left hand side with the dog positioned behind our leg. And we're going to do that stationary in your living room. You're going to use the couch and your coffee table set up, if you have a coffee table, as a guide to help the dog understand how close they need to be. First, you're going to have your dog in a sit and you're going to position yourself next to your dog, tight up next to their body and against the couch so that they understand how close they need to be to you in the heel position and you're going to feed them from this position don't name it yet just reward for the fact that your dog is sitting on your left hand side you're teaching your dog this is a good place to be this is a good position to be in after they focus on you and they're just staring up at you watching you sitting there waiting for heel. every move good. you make you're going heel. to start saying heel good give them a kibble piece of kibble. You can repeat. Heel. heel. Good. Kibble. Good. Heel. Good. good. Kibble. They're essentially not doing anything, but you're teaching them that this heel. position is called heel, and then you're rewarding them for being in the heel, even though they technically haven't done anything. It's just because they're in that position. After they understand, and they're focused on you, fully focused on you, after they understand that, that this is a good place to be, we need to start the heel in motion. So that's when you use kibble Good. or a high value treat and you hold it right in front of their nose and take two or three steps forward. You lure them with you with the treat. Good. At the point that you stop, you can raise the treat up above their head, luring them Good. into the sit when their butt hits the ground, you give heel. them the kibble. Good. So you're now teaching them to move forward exactly with you. At the point that you stop again, they're going to sit automatically, Good. and then you give them the food. As you get better and better and better at taking just a couple steps forward and then automatically sitting for the food, start to move around your coffee table. And it's easier to make left-hand turns at this point. So start with your left-hand turns and move around the coffee table or move around any other type of furniture you have Good. so that the furniture acts as a guide or a wall even acts as a guide the dog can't escape like to your left farther away from you they're going to stay nice and tight to your body and then because you're making those left hand turns you're helping them understand to stay back behind your leg Good. continue with this routine around the coffee table and around your living room making Good. left hand turns and incorporating right hand turns and always Heel. feeding and rewarding you can use your kibble you don't necessarily have to use treats unless they're not fully motivated for their Good. kibble then use a high value Heel. treat we just want to make it easy on the dog. We want the dog to really enjoy this and to really be excited about heel. And heel is an awesome place to be. And good, good things come to me when I'm in the heel position. So do this routine around your living room. And it might be for another good. week that you practice this every day. You might only practice five minutes at a time or 10 minutes at a time. It's so much better to do short sessions rather than work for an hour all at once. So do a couple sessions throughout the day, even if it's only five minutes, like three times a day, you'll make Good. such great progress in teaching your dog exactly what the heel position is. So then when you're out Good. walking and you say heel to your dog, they're extremely clear on what position heel means. And then you're going to incorporate left hand turns and right hand turns whenever you need to help them understand what position they need to be in or as a little check-in like a mental check-in hey i just made a right hand turn whoop off we go that way or well you're getting a little too far ahead of me you make a left hand turn and you help them understand that they need to stay back behind your leg
So after you've taught your dog the heel position and they understand the importance of paying attention to you, then when you're out on a walk, you can keep the leash short but not tight. And then when your dog gets slightly ahead or slightly behind your leg, you can just give them a little tug tug reminder and reinforcement of where they need to be. And this is what it will look like. Winston, heel. And you can do your turns. And your right hand turns. Good. Left hand turn. Right hand turn. Good. It's good that he looks up and checks in with me. Walk slow. Walk fast. Just practice this going up and down your street. You don't have to walk great distances to start. So perfect the walk where there's less distractions um, and really focus on position and focus from the dog rather than walking five miles a day. You wanna to get to the point or you can do this. Once they get awesome at this, you might not have to do all these crazy left hand, right hand turns all over the yard and all over the driveway, but it could be a week or two that you don't go for like straight long walks through your neighborhood, that you just are working that triangular pattern out in the yard, or you're just doing 180 degree turns back and forth in your driveway. It's so much better to require great focus and great positioning from your dog instead of walking great distances. All right guys, that's all for now. I hope you found this video to be informative. Thanks for watching. I hope you have an incredible day. Bye.